call is now being recorded. Uh, good morning, learners. Uh, I welcome you to the online class from Odisha State Open University. Today's topic is Introduction to Strategic Management. Strategy, this particular word, has much more relevance with the corporate world as well as even government sector. Strategy, this particular word, as a common man, we have heard a number of times, but we don't know how it is applied into uh, different corporates. Uh, in fact, when we say after globalization or after uh, you can say this post economic reform, this uh, competition among different, different corporates, it really intensified and there was huge uh, need of uh, strategy by different, different companies. And why they require those strategies? Is it really important? W what really it works? And what is the magic of strategy? What is the dynamism of strategy? To discuss all those things, today we have with us very young and dynamic mind, Dr. Ansuman Jena, who is uh, an academic consultant with Odisha State Open University. So today, We'll discuss about uh, strategic management, a framework. So without making any delay, may I request Dr. Ansuman Jena to start his deliberation. Thank, Thank you, you so, so, much, much, sir. Sir. so much, sir. Much, sir. Namaskar, Namaskar and, and welcome, welcome to this session. session. This particular course has four blocks. blocks. In this session, we are going to cover block one and that is introduction to strategic management. Under this block, there are three units. Unit one talks about strategic management and overview. Unit two talks about vision, mission, and objective and goals. Unit three talks about strategic management process. So let us now get into the basics of our discussion and that is what is strategy, why do we need strategy, approaches of strategic management, levels of strategy, mission, vision, goals and objectives then strategic management process. Under strategic management process, we have two subsections. They are environmental study, formulation, implementation, and evaluation of strategy. So we'll try to cover all these things in this particular session. So let us first try to understand what is the meaning of strategy? Each strategy only applied in case of business houses, corporates, profit-making organizations, or strategy is also essential for non-profit-making organizations. Each strategy applicable to any other field of our day-to-day -day life or whether it is applicable to any other field other than business. So that is also our point of discussion today. So as uh, the famous guru Chanakya says in his uh, book Arthasastra, he carefully or uh, uh, he and due to his immense contribution to the field of strategy, he is perceived to be one of the greatest strategists or strategic advisors or gurus in Indian context. Similarly, we have Sunju a Chinese philosopher, a Chinese warrior who has given 
his thoughts on strategy, particularly war strategy, in his very popular book, The Art of War. And we we know different stories from history, from the religious scriptures, how war strategies have been implemented in India and abroad. And switching on to the modern warfare concept, where uh, sophisticated weapons, tools, technology, human resource are being deployed for war. Like we have been discussing, the concept of strategy has come from warfare. Whether it is the game of chess, whether it is wars or battles between different rulers, whether it is the world war, whether it is any sports, any game, whether it is any activity that relates some kind of planning and execution to achieve a long-term goal or short-term goal or to gain some competitive advantage can be described as a situation which involves strategy. So what is strategy? How can we define strategy? Strategy is a unified, comprehensive and integrated plan that relates the strategic competitive advantage of the firm with regard to the business environment. So whether it is, let's say it is a game of cricket, where the cricketers are battling for a specific game or to uh, win a specific game, they, are, they also deploy strategy. You might have seen, based on the weather condition, based on the pitch condition, players are selected. Similarly, whether it is warfare or whether it is business, in both the cases, the environment in which the activity is going to happen or happening plays a crucial role in the strategy formulation. So a strategy could be a blueprint or a plan or a course of action of a set of decisions or rules which are interrelated, which are dependent on the strategic intent, mission, vision, What happened, Asuman? Is it any technical glitch? Ananda, am I audible to you? Yes, yes sir. sir. Am I am I audible now, sir? Hi, ah, yes, Anjuman. Now audible, please. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the intervention. Uh, like, 
So is my screen visible now? Yes, it is visible. So I was, was talking about, about. I was talking about. Yes, please continue. Yes, I I I, I was discussing about plans. blueprints courses of action and decision and their alignment with the strategic intent of the organization the mission vision policies goals and objectives and each of these should bring a sense of symmetry a sense of synergy the strategy or the strategic management process should act as a common thread which will align all these activities functional areas into one broader aspect or under one broader umbrella and it is a continuous process so what is strategic decision making so before we do anything we need to have our objectives crystal clear what do we mean by objective objective is related to the strategic intent what we want to become what we want to do what we want to achieve all these things come into play when we set our objective and of course understanding of own strength weaknesses opportunities and threats these are the things which will not only empower an individual or a business organization to ascertain its own competency its own capability and based on those capability or competency one should have the objectives defined from the very beginning so that we know what we are shooting for and then we need to have alternative ways of achieving the objective like uh, many a time it is advised that the strategic objectives should be achieved or at least there should be preparation with alternative strategies alternative plans like plan a plan b if plan a fails then the company should immediately switch to plan b and so on if we do not have alternative strategies then it might result in complete blockage or complete stoppage of our implementation no matter how good we think no matter how good we prepare but ultimately if we fail to implement or act upon those plans then basically everything goes into vain and each of these alternative strategies are to be evaluated with the objective that we are trying to achieve based on the propensity of success based on the competitive advantage based on the situation we should select the best possible alternative and decide to act upon it so that is the strategic decision making process where we are acting upon a set of predefined objectives so what is strategic management strategic management can be defined as the dynamic process of formulation 
implementation, evaluation, and control of strategies to realize the organization organization's strategic intent. Like I have told you, strategic intent talks about the intention or the objective upon which everything is going to be built. When we have the objectives with us, when the objectives are clearly defined and it is clearly communicated to all the stakeholders and there is sufficient level of understanding, then the processes which will follow, maybe through uh, uh, the implementation, maybe during evaluation, control, everything becomes easier. But if you do not have that strategic intent or our objectives clearly defined, then people or different stakeholders who are uh, contributing in multiple ways might act upon different things in mind. So setting the objective from the very beginning is the most crucial stage and the most fundamental or elementary activity of strategic management process. And strategic management consists of analysis, decisions, and actions an organization undertakes in order to create and sustain competitive advantage. So what is competitive advantage? Competitive advantage is the favorable position gained by a particular company or a particular individual over its rivals. Let's say if somebody is a good singer and he or she is participating in a singing contest or in a singing reality show, if he or she is really talented, so definitely his or her singing capability will give that particular person some mileage, some leverage, some advantage over all other participants. And that is the competitive advantage of that particular individual. Similarly, if a company has the capability to produce goods or services at a very cheaper rate, so that might become their competitive advantage. If a company has the capacity or capability to create superior value proposition or a very innovative design. So that might become their competitive advantage. There could be various types of competitive advantage when we'll uh, discuss competitive strategy, we'll get into the details of competitive advantage and competitive landscape. But yes, for now, you must understand competitive advantage is very, very essential these days or uh, in any situation, whether it is personal or professional sphere, if somebody has the competitive advantage, he or she can aim to achieve more or maximize profit or earnings. So that is one of the crucial aspects of strategic management. It should create that kind of competitive advantage. Then levels of management and levels of strategy. So this is a very simple diagram. I believe this kind of diagram you might have seen several times. This is a simple organizational structure where there is a corporate office or headquarters 
and there are different strategic business units or different business verticals under that particular conglomerate then for each strategic unit there are different functional areas like finance marketing operations hrm or human resource management it there could be research and development so based on the organizational structure we need to implement formulate regulate strategy so this is a slightly detailed version of the previous diagram here there are three levels you can see one is the corporate level or the uh, you know top management middle level management and the functional level or operational level management or in some books they are called low level management so the chairman board of director ceo cfo all these individuals they belong to the corporate level or the top management level then the mid level or sbu level includes chairman of division a let's uh, talk about tata group in india tata is one of the biggest conglomerates they have multiple divisions let's say they have their steel division they have their electronics division they have their software division they have their automotive division they have their telecom division they have their retail division right there are so many verticals or divisions in tata group so each of these groups should work in tandem maybe they are into different products or services they might be interacting with different group of customers they might be targeting to different group of customers they might be targeting or operating in different market segments but ultimately each and every organization with multiple divisions should formulate their strategy in such a way that each of these divisions will ultimately contribute in achieving the broader objective of the organization like tata group is largely uh, controlled by the tata sons tata sons is a, is the majority stakeholder in tata group they have their vision they have their mission we we will get into the uh, technical definitions of and applications of these uh, mission vision all these uh, concepts but for now let us understand how different divisions of a particular organization or belonging to a particular family or a conglomerate how they contribute in achieving or in realizing the same goal even if they are operating in different market segment even if they are operating in diff with different products and services and then comes the functional level the functional level like we have discussed consists of different functional areas of each business vertical so this is a detailed or slightly detailed diagram even if we can have uh, even if uh, we get into further detail the diagram can be even complex for large organizations it might be 
even more complex and uh, much bigger but the essence is every functional uh, uh, level the, or division every strategic business unit and each of the verticals under any business entity should work in tandem we'll get into the details of it very soon yes this is a simple four phase diagram of strategic management process so it begins with establishment of strategic intent or the objective or the mission vision statement or in simple terms we can say what the organization is trying to achieve and what the organization is trying to do so that statement or the strategic intent will lead to the formulation of strategies and again under formulation of strategies we have environmental scanning we have several other things i'll show you in the next slide so formulation of strategies will influence the implementation of strategies and ultimately while implementing we need to continuously evaluate whether we are on the right track or not whether we are doing the things we wanted to do or we plan to do and are we doing in the proper way or in the exact way which was intended if not then employ some control mechanism so that we get back to the desired direction or desired path here comes a slightly detailed version of the same diagram here strategy when we say strategic intent it includes mission vision business model goals objectives when we say strategy formulation it includes environmental appraisal organizational appraisal sort analysis corporate level strategies business level strategies functional level strategies then strategic analysis and strategic plan when we talk about strategic implementation it includes resource allocation project formulation finalization of procedures structural behavioral functional and operational aspects of implementation then ultimately strategic evaluation and control so each of these consist of a particular block or a major portion of our syllabus so this particular diagram also summarizes the strategic management process and various activities related to the formulation of formulation and implementation of strategy in any organization so what is strategic intent like i have told you it is a kind of ambition it is kind of obsession it is a kind of dream which the company or the promoters they have it talks about what they want to become or what they want to do and it is the fundamental aspect of the strategic management process if they are not obsessed they are not passionate about achieving the set objectives then it is as good as having no objective 
so based on the intention or based on the objective the company the promoters the stakeholders they need to arrange resources they need to enhance their capabilities they have to enhance their competencies so that they get some competitive advantage or leadership position vision vision can be defined as the category of intentions that are broad all inclusive and forward thinking this definition was given by miller and das then another definition of vision talks about the mental perception of the kind of environment an individual or an organization aspires to create within a broad time horizon and the underlying conditions for the actualization of this perception another definition by cotter defines vision as a description of something which is related to the organization the corporate culture the business the technology the activity which the company is either doing or engaging at present or intends to engage or do or perform in the future then comes mission mission can be defined as the essential purpose of the business organization concerning the purpose of this uh, its existence it can otherwise be defined as the purpose or reason for the organization's existence let us go back to the vision segment once again so vision is what the company the individual or the organization wants to become mission talks about what they are doing or what they want to do the purpose of their existence the reason of their existence and these two are different what are the characteristics of mission statements it should be feasible it should be realistic it should be achievable it should be clear and precise it should motivate the stakeholders it should motivate the investors it should motivate the employees it should motivate the customers it should be unique or distinct no two organizations can have the same mission statement and based on the mission statement or the vision statement the organization formulates its strategies what is a business model here is a definition given to you let me give you a simple uh, interpretation of business model business model is that plan which talks about the revenue stream it talks about how exactly the company is going to make money or earn revenue so the business model is also dependent on the strategic intent of uh, the organization 
so uh, like we have discussed if you can recall the previous diagram each of these things whether it is strategic intent whether it is formulation of strategy whether it is implementation evaluation control all these things are interlinked each one of these depends on its predecessor then let us come to goals and objectives goals denote what an organization hope to accomplish in future whereas objectives are the ends or objectives are the state where goals are achieved then why we need to have objectives like we have been discussing if we do not have objectives then it might be misleading it might be confusing it might create conflict and ultimately everything will become chaotic if we do not have our objectives absolutely clear and spelled out and communicated with all the stakeholders when we set our objectives these objectives often talks about the organization's relationship with its environment there are uh, you know internal environment micro environment macro environment so we'll discuss about those then objectives are also to be created based on the mission and vision statement of the organization objectives unlike mission or vision mission and vision are broad statements but when we are talking about objectives these are measurable these can be or any a company or an organization can have short term objective medium term objective and long term objective and since these are measurable performance appraisal can easily be done and that is the basic purpose of having objectives despite a company is already having a mission statement and a vision statement characteristic of objectives of <coughs> sorry objective should be understandable so no company no organization <coughs> sorry no company no organization they try to achieve the objectives sorry they they try to achieve the mission and vision directly mission and vision can be achieved through different objectives so the objectives should be understandable it should be absolutely specific or pertinent there should be a time frame associated with each objective and its implementation and realization it should be measurable controllable it should be challenging no one should set objectives uh, which is of sub standard 
which is easy which is convenient if the company or any company any individual they have multiple objectives these objectives should correlate with each other these objectives should complement each other there should not be any contrast or conflict while we are setting our objectives and while setting our objectives we also need to understand the context in which these objectives are going to be acted upon what are the possible challenges or constraints an organization might face while implementation or while executing these objectives so these are the few things which make or these are the some of the characteristics which make objectives very very important in the strategic management process then what are the specific issues we as strategic managers need to carefully consider while formulating our objectives these are very similar to the characteristic however if any one aspect is compromised or any of these aspects are diluted then the sanctity of the objective or the power of the objective will also be diluted so it should be specific it should be multiple what is multiplicity it can be multiplied it can be replicated in other setups if the objective is achieved it can be scalable to next level then there has to be periodicity verifiability reality and quality associated with these objectives quality can be defined as a set of tolerable parameters which is mutually agreed between the buyer and the seller when we go to have food in let's say uh, into a street or a roadside vendor or a roadside hotel or restaurant then our quality perception may something different we don't expect uh, a very professional individual giving us food or serving us food or preparing food there but when we go and uh, of course the ambience and everything else associated with the service delivery process but when we go to a standard restaurant or hotel so there we expect professional level of service or performance right so the same individual is expecting different levels or different quality of service performance under different circumstances so when we go to a roadside dhaba or hotel or restaurant we know what kind of uh, activity we are getting into what kind of service hygiene ambience 
test we are going to get or we can expect so there quality the definition of quality or the perception of quality for the same individual varies in both the context and objective when we are going to let's say a fast food joint or road side dhaba then our objective is something different maybe we intend to get a quick bite but when we go to a fine dining restaurant there our objective is different we are not only expecting good food healthy hygienic tasty food but we are expecting a soothing ambience so that we can spend some quality time there we can enjoy our meal we are not there to rush for the meal we are going to take time sit back relax and enjoy the food on the contrary our objective as customers is almost the opposite when we are going to a road side food stall right so these objectives should while setting objectives the reality or the real situations the ground reality should also be taken into consideration several times policy makers particularly in uh, public enterprises particularly in government setup they are criticized that the policy makers are formulating policies in ac rooms with all the comfort of their life with all luxury and with all uh, requirements fulfilled so they are not accustomed to the ground reality what is happening in the field what is happening at the grassroots level so that disconnect reflects in the policy framework they propose or they uh, enact so setting objectives which are realistic which are verifiable which are measurable which are quantifiable are very very important then forecasting forecasting talks about anticipating the future scenarios situations and preparing well in advance let's say let, let us take this uh, covid example nobody could anticipate the kind of demand for face masks sanitizers and all the tools or uh, all the equipments that is required whether it is a ppe kit or uh, P sorry ppe kit or uh, face mask or sanitizer or simple hand wash required to fight this covid situation now and you have or all of us have seen or all of us have witnessed till today the health workers they are deprived of the basic facilities equipments tools 
required for their own safety as well as safety of their patients so if somebody could have forecasted that we are we can expect such a kind of pandemic which is going to influence which is going to affect the entire world at present the entire world is almost stand still heavy lockdown measures are imposed in almost all the major economies in almost all the major cities of the world so if somebody could have forecasted all these well in advance and all concern could have been made aware well in advance then the level of preparedness to fight this pandemic would have been easier the health workers the policy makers citizens and in general all the stakeholders should have been in a much more better or or uh, in a better position to fight this pandemic that is the beauty of forecasting it not only anticipates what is going to happen it also enables the stakeholders to take corrective measures to take proactive measures to prepare to get ready so that the damage can be minimized you must have seen or you must have experienced or you might have witnessed the kind of disaster preparedness we had this time during the cyclone amphan citizens were prepared government machinery they were prepared business entities they were prepared the disaster response team they were prepared everybody was prepared so that we could minimize our losses in odisha but in west bengal of course the intensity was much higher as compared to odisha but still i would not be wrong to call their preparedness as inferior or insufficient as compared to odisha or the preparedness of odisha and odisha government is being rewarded is being recognized for its disaster preparedness so environmental forecasting business forecasting demand forecasting all these things talk about the future scenario and they also give us some direction to take proactive measure so that we are well prepared to the upcoming challenge or the upcoming threat so there are three basic components or inputs attached to forecasting first one is environmental scanning environmental monitoring is the second point and the third input is competitive intelligence so here uh, in business setup we can say 
these three inputs are going to help us in anticipating our future course of action there are several companies those who were extremely popular they were the market leaders at one point of time but gradually they lost their focus or maybe they became so myopic in their approach they lost track of the upcoming challenges upcoming changes whether it is nokia whether it is kodak whether it is xerox xerox was one of the pioneers in uh, whether it is ibm to a great extent ibm xerox these were considered to be the most innovative companies at some point of time but it is uh, uh, slightly controversial to say or microsoft and apple they are uh, allegedly stolen the idea or they have improved upon the idea or innovation created by xerox and they could become multi billion dollar companies same goes for facebook same goes for twitter they are all accused of stealing from their competitors but these are all allegations nothing has been proved so far but yes they could prepare themselves for the upcoming challenges the upcoming revolution but companies like kodak they have failed to anticipate the digital technology emerging in the field of photography they were still developing those celluloids they were still developing all those basic phones i'm talking about nokia another classic example is blackberry blackberry was a sensation in mobile handset industry but now you see they have not only lost their crown they have lost their business they have lost their identity nokia is trying to revamp nokia is trying to stand up once again so if these companies they have been proactive they have been intelligent enough to anticipate the environmental changes the competitive landscape then they could have easily forecasted what they should do to not only survive but to strive so we will we will get into uh, the details of environmental scanning in block 2 there are several tools techniques methods available in your syllabus or mentioned in your syllabus mentioned in your study material we will be talking or discussing each of those tools techniques method with sufficient number of examples and applied problems or uh, cases so what is environment environment is the aggregate of all conditions situations events and influences that surround and affect us like natural environment whatever we see we feel we sense is a part of 
our natural environment it directly or indirectly affects every other element in the in the environment similarly in case of business environment there are certain elements and each of those elements influence the remaining elements in the ecosystem or in the environment business environment is complex it is dynamic it has got multiple aspects or it is multifaceted and any change in one element of the business environment will have far reaching impact on several other elements of the business environment like we have discussed there are certain controllable and uncontrollable factors or elements in the business environment and why we need to bother about the business environment why we need to study why we need to care about business environment because it helps in identifying our own strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats it also helps us in identifying the possible changes in the controllable and the uncontrollable elements of the business environment it also tells us whether a particular strategy will be accepted well by the stakeholders it also tells us or gives us a sense or inputs for our strategy formulation that's why business of study or analysis of business environment is equally important as setting objectives goals or mission vision because it sets the context in which we are operating and it tells us what are the dynamic processes consequences we are going to face while implementing our plans goals or objectives then what are the components of business environment like i have told you there are internal environment micro environment and macro environment so trade unions employees business units different functional areas like marketing finance hrm different branches franchise all these are coming under the internal environment of the organization if it is a manufacturing it has got manufacturing facilities if it has got inventory all these belong to the internal environment of the company similarly the micro environment consist of the customers the consumers business partners competitors intermediaries suppliers and public or general stakeholders then the macro environment includes the society the locality the geographic location 
the culture tradition social norms ethics political environment level of education level of economy technology legal framework rules regulations natural resources and other economic factors so this diagram talks about or this diagram depicts different elements of the business environment and they are dependent with each other so the internal environment is mostly or to a greatest possible extent can be controlled can be regulated by the business entity whereas the micro environment has moderate influence or moderate control and the elements of the ma macro environment they are the least controllable elements in the business environment so why a business entity should try to control these elements because for a very simple reason if directly or indirectly the business organization is able to control these factors no matter whether they are internal micro or macro they can use these elements to their competitive advantage or to their benefit or in simple terms if things are in control things are in desired order if things are in suitable arrangement or in suitable conditions it will favor the organization to achieve its goals to achieve its objectives and ultimately realizing its mission vision or the strategic intent that is why each and every company irrespective of their size their origin their bank balance their goodwill irrespective of anything and everything they try to directly or indirectly control as many elements of their business environment they can control so this is another diagram which talks about the internal environment tax environment and general environment it is a manifestation of the same thing but with a different orientation then this is another diagram which uh, talks about the elements or components of the business environment then eight sectors or eight major elements of the business environment it is economic it is international it is the market it is political regulatory socio cultural supplier and technological environment in some books it is called pestel analysis this analysis or these elements 
help the organization to understand the context or the setup in which they are operating so p stands for political environment e stands for economic environment a stand for social or socio cultural environment t stands for technological environment e stands for uh, environment tell and aspect or natural environment and l stands for legal environment so in demographic we are essentially talking about the population the gender the age the income the ethnicity the density of population size of population then income disparity or income division of money or distribution social class all these things are coming under the demographic environment then socio cultural environment or the social cultural aspect it talks about the gender ratio whether it is friendly for women to work whether it is opposing a particular religion a particular sexual orientation or a particular gender to actively participate in the economic process or in the workforce what kind of family values family system are there how these families are interacting or households how these are interacting in the social setup what kind of social values norms cultural beliefs religious beliefs are there and so on then political uh, legal framework these uh, these uh, are some american example but there are uh, the same thing can be uh, interpreted in indian context like couple of years back or uh, uh, since the implementation of gst goods and services tax since the new transport act has been implemented the companies act has been revised the it act has been revised or amended so all these political decisions legal frameworks also determine whether the environment is conducive for businesses or not at present all of us we can see there is a negative perception or there is a negative sentiment for chinese companies chinese products chinese brands though there is no clear legal route taken by the government but it is the citizens 
who are opposing who are uh, influencing the government or pressurizing the government to act some legislation which will restrict import of chinese goods and so on then the technological environment technological environment talks about or it includes the existing level of technology and it includes all kind of technology in all kind of spheres of business whether it is manufacturing whether it is engineering whether it is telecom whether it is information technology whether it is computing wireless communication whether it is manufacturing gis gps remote sensing and how actively these are being used in a particular country or in a particular location then the economic environment what is the level of literacy what is the level of income what is the level of saving what is the per capita income what are the interest rates what is the level of unemployment what is the rate of inflation how fast or slow the gdp is growing what are the stock market performance so all these economic aspects also get into the strategic management framework when we are considering to analyze to study the business environment then how do we stand as a country in the global scenario what is our bargaining power what is our power of influence so that is also uh, determined not only by the political entities political parties the government that also substantially influence the businesses these are some examples where the impact of various elements of the business environment on different industries have been portrayed and of course the kind of impact so the let us go to the first element that is uh, demographic and under that if we consider aging population that means if there are more elderly people in the country or in the state or in a particular geographic location then it will have a positive impact on the healthcare industry because many of the aging individuals they might require healthcare facilities they might frequently get ill and the healthcare industry will flourish that is why aging population will have a positive impact on the healthcare industry whereas 
baby products since there are more number of elderly people baby products will have a negative impact similarly if the income or the affluence of the citizens is improving then it is expected that people will invest in brokerage or in share market or in stock market so that industry will flourish on the contrary the fast food industry or the fast food businesses will have a negative impact because when people are having sufficient disposable income possibly they will prefer to have healthier lifestyle they might prefer not to eat or not to consume fast food if people have more disposable income they might also consider having pets so pet and related industry will have a positive impact similarly there are several other examples given in this particular slide and you can see how each and every element given here has the capacity to influence different sectors different industries in that particular economy and under each industry there will be several companies form startups small micro medium scale enterprises and ultimately any change in any of these elements will have positive or negative impact or maybe uh, zero impact on certain industries or on certain sector so each business entity need to be very very careful about these changes and that is the essence of studying or understanding the business environment that is the sole purpose of environmental scanning and environmental appraisal so with this let us conclude the session if you have any doubts any questions any queries you can ask me these are some of the resources made available to each one of you by odisha state open university you can use these facilities these resources to enhance your knowledge understanding skill and competency thank you all looking forward to your questions over to simoy sir thank you so much now i am going to stop sharing my screen thank you so much dr ansuman jena it was really an enlightening session for all those learners of odisha state open university and uh, you really uh, have thrown light on different aspects of strategy how this framework works why companies adopt different strategies what is uh, the environmental uh, factors that really influence to make strategy that was really enlightening so uh, at last i would like to thank uh, 
you as well as our technical support mr anand das for giving uh, the support uh, throughout the session so uh, again we'll have class uh, next time uh, thank you so much have a good day all thank you sir thank you anand thank you anand and looking forward to the next session the next session have a good day So this is the official announcement that the session ends here. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you, sir.